Floss Tube. I'm Audrey Marine, and this is my 11th episode of Floss Tube. Today is Saturday, December 9th, uh, 2023. We're almost at the end of the year. I think I will have just one more episode this year. It'll be closer to the end of the month, uh, and then we'll already be into 2024. But I have a bunch of progress to share with you today on a few different projects. And then I have a new start that I shared a little bit on my Instagram stories. Um, but I'll talk about it here as well. And then I have a bunch of new charts that I purchased because Cyber Monday happened. And some people had some really good deals. So I took advantage of that. So I will just jump right in, I think. Um, let's see. I have um, a little itty bitty bit of progress on Hannah Campbell. So if you guys have watched any of my previous videos, I think I mentioned this in every video because... You know, when I started these videos back in May, I think it was, I had just purchased her. Maybe I had purchased it. Yeah. Well, it was around that time that I started Floss Tube that I purchased this, the entire kit from the attic. And I started it shortly, shortly thereafter. And I've been working on it ever since. And the, the goal that I set for myself has moved a few times. You know, I was like, oh, I was going to finish it in a couple months. And then I was like, well, I'll finish it by my birthday. And then it was like, I'll finish it by the end of the year. And now it's like, if I finish it at all, <laughs> I will be very proud of myself because Hannah has been a challenge. <clears throat> and any of you who have worked on Hannah Campbell, you know this, just because there's so much over one. Um, if you're doing it on a high thread count, I mean, you get it. So you'll notice that this doesn't look that much different from um, how it looked when I showed it last time. I got these little things done here. There were half a dozen or so missing of these little hot pink leaves or whatever you want to call them. And then I got a couple more letters in and I finished Hannah Campbell's last name because I think I had Hannah Camp or something like that. Uh, so I finished that. So that is all the progress I have made on Hannah Campbell, but progress is progress. So she is, we're still moving along. We're still plugging along on Hannah and she will get finished one day. But um, part of the reason I really didn't get much uh, stitching in on Hannah is that it has been three weeks since my last video, but I spent about a week and a half of that at my mother's house and I brought, I think I brought five things with me, five projects with me, uh, but I only worked on two of them. Yeah, I only worked on two of them. So I brought with me, let me get this right. I brought Harriet Hay, which I will show. I brought the Rose and the Giant Pear. I brought a Mill Hill kit. I brought a Plum Street. And I brought something else I already forgot. But basically, <clears throat> oh, that's what I brought. I brought another, um, a small sampler from the Words of Wisdom box. And I did actually finish that when I was at my mother's. I sent a picture to Laura. I was like, look, I finished it. But I won't share that with you here uh, because I know there are at least a few people who are waiting until uh, Christmas to open their Words of Wisdom box and I don't want to spoil it. And I have seen Nicola post some things about her suggestion is that we wait until after the holidays to share any progress or finishes or something. Maybe except um, <clears throat> the exception would be for those who are in the red box group on Facebook. Cause I know people are sharing whatever they've, um, you know, made progress on or finished in that group, but it's a, it's a private Facebook group, but you can join. Um, I think you just have to answer a couple questions or they vet your name or something to make sure you've actually purchased a box. I have no idea. Uh, but I did finish that. So I have a finish but I'm not going to show it to you today, <clears throat> but it is a really nice little sampler. And I, you know, threw it in my box of other finished samplers to be sent off to the framer next year. Um, <clears throat> so I think maybe in maybe in January or even in February, I'll go over what I finished out of the words of wisdom box so far, because now I have two finishes from that box. Um, one is from the black book if you guys are curious like for those of you who have it you'll know what I mean um and then the other one I think is the first one that you pull out of the box um it's either the first or the second one because it was like there was when I was opening my box I only opened the first two things 
and then I didn't open anything else for about a week or so. So I remember this, the one that I just finished uh, within the last couple weeks was one of the first things in the box. Anyway, that was rambling for no reason. So I finished that small sampler at my mother's. This is over the Thanksgiving holiday um, that I was up there for quite a while. And then apart from that, I just work, worked on Harriet Hay. And I, I got so much progress done on Harriet Hay. I mean, there were a couple days in there that I put in over a thousand stitches uh, each day. So, so this is, this is the chart. This photo is a little fuzzy, but it gives you an idea of what the sampler looks like. Very bright, very colorful. So go to, um, you know, I know the attic and some other, some other LNSs carry what was Mill on the Floss. Now she's just rebranding everything, linen and charts to Tabby Cat. But you can go onto Tabby Cat online and find this chart and the other items that she has. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have had a tickle in my throat and now, of course, my nose is acting up. So I might have to pause this and go get a tissue at some point. But anyway, so and then I got the Addicts conversion for Harriet Hay. I know I show these every time, but I love the colors. So Harriet Hay, I won't say she's almost done, but I'll say she's three quarters of the way done. Maybe a little less, maybe about three quarters. Considering most of the stitches are up there in the house and the two trees, I think I can say I'm three quarters of the way done. I was so happy when I finished that house. I don't mind stitching houses and I love, I love samplers with houses, don't we all? Especially a big red house. And this one is really interesting because it's actually color block. So it's a really bright red and then this is more of a wine color. But I have found that I hate windows and houses have windows, but I hate stitching them. <coughs> um, I don't know what it is, but I do the frames, the window frames, and that doesn't really bother me so much, but it's the filling in of the window panes that I really detest, and I, I can't even tell you why. But the house itself, the facade of the house, I love stitching, and then the grass took a long time, but it wasn't, it wasn't awful, because I broke it up. You know, I would do like a line of grass, and then I would do some other motif. So when you guys last saw this, I had, <clears throat> let's see, I had about, I had about this done for the top. And then I had not yet done this couple or this little bird here. And then I hadn't yet started, <coughs> excuse me, I hadn't yet started this pot, which is just going to be another one of these. So I did make a lot of progress on Harriet Hay. Now I started this on October 19th. So I feel that in, you know, a little under two months, I have made a lot of progress on that. I'm really, I'm really happy with how much I've gotten done. I thought, I thought I'd really like to be able to take it with me to the attic when I go for sampler symposium, which is mid January, January 11th or something that I leave. Uh, so I thought, well, I'm going to set myself the goal of finishing it by the end of the year. And that way, you know, if I make it, if I don't make it, I've got a little bit of a buffer. I'd like to take it with me to the attic for show and tell or whatever. I feel like, you know, even Brenda told me, she's like, bring stuff for show and tell. But uh, that was something I had been thinking of, especially since I got the attic's conversion. You know, I got the 103s because the call for, uh, <clears throat> for Harriet Hay, let's see, I don't even know where it is. called for is Auvergne Soie, Soie d'Alger, or DMC. So if you want, <coughs> excuse me, the Attic's conversion, you'll have to call and get that from them. Uh, and then on the way home from my mother's, it's a, it's a long drive, I got a lot of stitching done on, and sometimes it's hard for me to stitch in the car because of, you know, it's, it's not the most stable thing. It's easy for me to stitch on airplanes as long as I have elbow room because it's so smooth. 
but stitching in the car is sometimes difficult. But I did manage to get a lot of stitching done. Ryan drove the whole way home, which was really nice. He doesn't <coughs> seem to mind driving. So Ryan didn't seem to mind driving the whole way, <coughs> which was nice. And we just listened to episode after episode of Lexicon Valley. If you guys are at all interested in language, grammar, etymology, anything like that, it's a really interesting show. And I do not like podcasts. I kind of, I don't like buzzing in my ear. I, I don't listen to, I, I have AirPods, I have headphones, but I rarely use them. Sometimes I use them on the airplane. But other than that, I don't like things pumped in, you know, noise pumped directly into my ears. I will have the turntable on blast, but uh, I don't usually like uh, even radio noise or anything like that, which is funny because Ryan works on the radio. But uh, so we listened to Lexicon Valley, which I really enjoyed, and I got a lot of stitching done on Plum Street Samplers, A Shepherd's Song. I moved more, you know, I got farther into this row of sheep here, and I moved a bit up, I moved up a bit on the border and got some more grass done. And I also got the dog done. There he is. He's so cute. So I think I need to finish um, the eyes and put a little bit of pink in the ears here of these two sheep. And then of course, continue with the grass and stitch more sheep and whatnot, <coughs> fill in the center of this flower. But you'll notice that on the chart, the dog is way up here. And then Paulette had put her name, she put this phrase up here. And so we've ended up, we ended up kind of getting a, a floating tree, a floating dog, and then her name. So what I have decided to do is I'm going to take this long flower out. I moved the dog down already. I made that decision. I moved him down. But I, I stitched him exactly where he was, you know, this way. So I just moved him down. Uh, and then I, I found a phrase, a saying, that I would like to use instead of this. So instead of, may goodness and mercy follow thee, I just did a little bit of Googling and I was like, well, what phrases or, or sayings or something can I find that have to do with sheep? And I actually found something. And I found, <clears throat> it was credited to Ernest Lyman. And I was like, well, who is that? And then I started doing some research on him and I found that he worked on some Alfred Hitchcock movies and he also worked on The Sound of Music. And the saying that I found was from The Sound of Music. Now I have not seen The Sound of Music and I know you're all going, oh, oh my God, you haven't seen The Sound of Music. No, I love Julie Andrews, but I have no interest in watching that movie. I have seen it. I have heard enough of the music to know that it is not for me. But, and don't hate me because I love Mary Poppins, okay? But uh, I found this phrase. I thought it would be perfect. Now, I may change my mind, but I think it, I think it works really well. And if you guys have seen The Sound of Music and you know the phrase, I want you to put it in the comment. This is a little, little trick, or not a trick, but a little... Um, quiz maybe. See if you guys know what phrase I'm talking about. Uh, and then I'm going, so I'm going to use her font here and I figured out that the phrase that I'm using or the saying, the line from that movie that I feel is applicable to this scene that we have here, it is longer than this saying. Um, so I will have to kind of stitch it down into here like around the dog. And so I didn't really care for this flower anyway. And so I thought, well, if I just take that out, that will give me more room for more words. And then whatever room I do have left, I can fill in with some of these little, these little squares or maybe another eight pointed star because I do like that. And then I can put my name, you know, I can put my name over here or something if I want because I don't think I need that shepherdess. I don't think I need her. But this is, <clears throat> I'm using the called for over dyed threads. Let's pull this down. He's not cooperating. Called for over dyed threads on 40 count French pair. Uh, this was dyed by number 12 Stitch Co. Nicola is in Australia. 
Um, but you know what? If you order enough, she gives you free shipping no matter where you are in the world. And I think her, her linen is great. Her colors are beautiful. And for the folks in the U.S., she says that I think you have to spend 100 Australian dollars to get free shipping, free worldwide shipping, and that's like 60 some US dollars. So it's really not that much if, if you wanna just fill your cart up with fun stuff. Yeah, so I made progress on that. Uh, the next thing I stitched uh, was the rose and the dry pair. I did not finish that. I was thinking, you know, three weeks ago, I had a good chunk of this done. And I thought, oh, I can finish it before my next video. Well, I could have, but I got so singularly focused on Harriet Hay that I didn't do much more with this. So when I last saw you guys, I had this done, except I probably didn't have quite all this border done, but I had the pear finished, um, at least the pear and this leaf I had finished. But I know I did this little duck, you saw the duck. So since then, I have stitched, I have finished off that leaf on the other side of the pair, did a little bit more of the border, and stitched the house. Now you'll notice the windows are not filled in. <laughs> I do not like filling in windows. I will do it, but I don't know what it is. I just hate it. This is really pretty though. This is, <clears throat> this is 56 count creme brulee tabby cat linen. And this is the, the Soie Surfine, gifted to me by Barry. Thank you, Barry. Uh, but these would be the same colors if you were to use the 103s or if you use the Soie Dolce. And I have seen people use the DMCs as well because Alba Stitcher, Amanda, she stitched this. And she used DMCs on, I think, 32 count. And it's just as beautiful. So... If you want to stitch on lower thread count linen, use DMCs, cottons, whatever. Uh, I think I think you'll be very pleased with it. It is a cute little sampler. It's really cute. So I'm happy with the progress I've made on that. I think I can finish that. I don't. I just have to decide what I want to what I want to work on. You know. I've got so how many whips is that? I don't know, it's probably still too many. But I got, I don't know, I got antsy or something. Not yesterday, but the day before. I was like, I wanna, I wanna do Christmas something. And I know, you know, I had this in my collection, thanks to my mom. She bought these for me back in the summer. Uh, she called House of Stitches and got the individual little cards, all the ones that she could, but I think she could only get 10 of them. So then she went on to eBay and found this, or one, two, three stitch. Maybe she got it from one, two, three stitch. Because I just looked before I started recording, and if you are interested in this, they have this part one and part two on one, two, three stitch. Now your LNS may have this or may be able to get it, but it is an older chart. It does say copyright 2023, so maybe they reissued this. So maybe it would be more readily available. Um, but you'll see, it has this point here a little banner flag or something like that. I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm making them all rectangular. And actually, if you get the smaller cards, uh, it shows you a completed version that is pointed like this and also a completed version that is finished in just a rectangle. But I will show you what I have done on that. And I was going great guns on this on Thursday. And then Friday, yesterday... I had a bunch of stuff that I needed to do around the house. And then we ended up going out to dinner with uh, one of Ryan's old colleagues who was in town for the PRI show. So we went out to dinner and it was like a three and a half hour dinner or something. But mom, don't worry about me because it was with Daniel and it wasn't someone I don't like. So <laughs> it was nice. We went to Chatham Tap, downtown Indianapolis. They have the best wings I have ever had. But I was mad because I only got three flats. So I was a little grumpy about that, but... It's okay. Anyway, um, so this is my start on the first of 12, because it is a series of 12, 12 days of Christmas. This is the partridge in the pear tree. Now, uh, Sweetheart Tree always calls for DMCs. That's what they use. Let me see if I can get this closer to you. You gonna focus? Nope. 
doesn't want to focus is that it is that better <laughs> again um but what i did was i went through my stash of overdrive because i have a lot of them now and i thought well i can come up with my own conversion and we can have a little bit of fun with this so <clears throat> i selected and they're a little <laughs> they're a little messy but i selected a bunch of colors that i liked to substitute now on this pair there are actually two different golds but what I found for the pair, and I was really excited about this, I selected Autumn Leaves. Because look at that. It's like light gold, dark gold, got a bit of brown. You know how pairs can be. <laughs> I was telling Ryan about this. He was like, yeah, pairs are weird. <laughs> I guess, and they come in all sorts of different colors, even red. So if you want your pairs to be red, make them red or green or gold or whatever. Or brandied already hanging on the tree. <laughs> Uh, and then I wasn't crazy about this green color, so of course I wanted to substitute that. I chose dried thyme for the leaves. And then for the outline, I chose English ivy. And then ribbon red is going to be my red that goes, actually, for the ribbons. You see on day two, day five, there's a beautiful ribbon. Yeah. Um, so autumn leaves, apple cider, tarnished gold, oatmeal was what I chose for the numbers themselves. Uh, called for was a crew for those numbers and I chose oatmeal. And then molasses for part of the bird. I liked this. And then I, I selected something to do all the back stitching around the bird and the number and the branches because English ivy is what goes around the leaves and this little bit of back stitching here would be your English ivy or whatever dark green you select I think it's 500 is what's called for <clears throat> but I wanted um I wanted blackbird classic color works blackbird to outline the bird and the tree branches and stuff and I could not find it and so I selected something else that I wasn't crazy about and then it dawned on me I was like oh I put blackbird in with some other weird kit and I was like how am I gonna find what kit I put it in or what chart because I just like stick it in the zippy of the chart right but thankfully I went in digging around and it was in the first little baggie that I pulled out which was great so I'd say if you're interested in those, and this, you know, this stitched up so quickly. And this is what I got. Now, granted, this is what I worked on on Thursday. I didn't work on any other projects. Um, and so this is several hours of stitching. And I stitched pretty late that night as well. Uh, but I had fun with it. I had forgotten how much I liked Sweetheart Tree charts. I think some of them can look a little dated. But... I don't know I like them this is another sweetheart tree that I finished this is actually on 32 count this is an itty bitty kitty chart itty bitty kitty I think this one's called tulip time in Holland this was the first sweetheart tree chart that I ever saw I saw it at persnickety stitches and I saw it and I was like oh I don't need it and it was like ten dollars or something and I was like I don't need that little chart but then I went back months later and it was still there and I was like, screw it, I'm getting it. And I'm so glad I did. I did it in just a couple days and it is the sweetest little thing. And my mom finished it into this little pillow here and I got this tassel and this bright red cord. Yeah. Now these little flower beads, they seem to come with um, a lot of the Sweetheart Tree charts. And in fact, they came with the 12 days of Christmas as well. You can leave them off if you don't like them, but they just add a little bit. You know, you've got a tiny little red mill hill bead that goes in the center. It just adds a little something to it. So I will use them. I like them. I, like the, I mean, I like beads in general, hence Stitch Stitch Bead. Follow me on Instagram at Stitch Stitch Bead. When I started that account, I, I had all these like, Clever handles, they were all taken. It was so frustrating. It was frustrating. So then I like typed in stitch, stitch, bead, 
which is kind of like a duck, duck, goose thing, right? Um, and that wasn't taken. I was like, okay, fine. We'll just go with it. But more about beading. So if you guys have looked at my Instagram or watched any of my older videos, you'll know that I have done a lot of Mill Hill kits. That's where I started. And before I started stitching on linen, that's all I did was Mill Hill kits on perforated paper. And I loved them and I was pretty quick to finish them. Uh, but since I started stitching on linen, I'm obsessed with stitching on linen. And now I understand why people have a hundred whips because, I mean, it still gives me anxiety to think about. I'm not going to have a hundred whips anytime soon. But uh, I understand how you, you, stitching on linen or Ada or whatever it is, opens up so many possibilities that you're like, oh, well, look at these thousands and thousands of charts that are out there. I mean, how do you limit it? But uh, <clears throat> a couple years ago, I think it would have been a couple years ago at this point, I started the <sighs> Christmas Village series by Mill Hill. I had already done the Main Street series. Not all of them. I did nine of them. Technically, I did 10 of them, but one of them I didn't like, so I need to do something with it because it's like sitting in a box. It's finished sitting in a box. So maybe I should put it on a box top or something and give it to someone. But uh, so I did nine and I had them framed and then I started on the Christmas Village. I finished two in the Christmas Village. This is one of them. This is the schoolhouse. And again, these were just sitting in a box waiting for me to complete seven more to finish like in a Brady Bunch fashion. But then I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna finish those other seven anytime soon. And I knew I had Mill Hill frames. So I thought, you know what? We're just gonna frame these up. So I didn't get any stitching done yesterday. I got no stitching done yesterday. We got home at 10 o'clock or something from dinner. Uh, and I thought, oh, well, you know, I could stay up and I could, and I thought, screw it. No. So I spent time, you know, monitor shopping is what I call window shopping online. You just like add crap to cart, but you don't <laughs> check out not yet anyway. Um, so I just spent a little bit of time eating chocolate chip cookies and drinking milk <laughs> and looking at stitchy stuff online. But yesterday before we went out, I got this into a frame. So it is hard to see, but it does say village schoolhouse right there. And it's got this little snowman bead. So these button and bead kits from Mill Hill, they come with all the DMC you need, all the Mill Hill beads you need, and then they'll come with a button as well. And the button varies from chart to chart, but it happens that the two that I'm showing you have the same button. It's the same little snowman. Now you'll notice these frames are slightly different greens. This is more of a teal peacock green, and this is, you know, forest Christmas green. Um, and I got these into, into these little frames. It was a couple of years ago, maybe longer, that I just bought about half a dozen different Mill Hill frames just to check out the colors and stuff. So I got these two different greens, um, and then I have the Mill Hill Nautilus shell in a cream frame that's in the guest bathroom and then mill hills barnyard morning is in a red frame and that is on my kitchen counter and that barnyard morning is really cute you guys should check it out so if you like these they're really easy uh, i think the the size is five by five or five and a half by five and a half something like that and as i say the kits are I think they're like 16 dollars retail and uh, they come with everything you need, including the perforated paper. If you've never stitched on perforated paper, it's easy. Now, my nine-year-old, Morris, he started with the Mill Hill kits because that's how I started. And I thought, well, the perforated paper stays stiff and it doesn't bend or anything, so it'd be easy to use. But then he started stitching on linen. He's like, mom, this is so much better than stitching on perforated paper because his thing was that he would, you know, as you're stitching, he would sometimes get his floss caught on the corner of the perforated paper. And, and I did that a lot too, but apparently it was a point of great frustration and I didn't even really realize it. And so once he started stitching on linen in a hoop, there was nothing to catch except maybe on the bit that you tighten on your hoop, right? But he got good at avoiding that. Like you could get your floss caught on this, I guess, but. Okay, so I got those framed. 
and I put one on my dining room table next to my little ceramic tree from Lennox with all these different ornaments on it. Uh, and then I put another one somewhere in the living room. So I'll have to put those back <laughs> now that I've, now that I've shown them to you. So I think that, oh, that is everything as far as my progress goes, but I did take these out to show you again, uh, a couple more Mill Hill kits. So every year Mill Hill comes out with a set of three Santas and all the Santas are related to each other. And there's a common theme here. So these ones came out in 2022. Uh, these are the Timberline Santas. And this one is Scotch Pine Santa. I have not stitched this. I would like to do this because I have already completed the other two. This guy is Douglas Fir Santa. He just needs to be cut out and uh, backed with some stiff paper and a cord put on him like I do with this. And this is the third in the series. This is Norway Spruce Santa. So again, it comes with all of the all of the DMC and all of the beads that you need. And I just finish it. I've got this stiff, uh, it's like a scrapbook paper, but it's embossed. It's really stiff. I got this at Michael's years ago. And I'm afraid one day I'm gonna run out of it. I didn't, I should have just bought all that they had. Uh, but I think I only bought like six sheets or something and now they don't make this particular paper anymore, but that's okay. So I just cut it out and I use acid-free glue to adhere it to the back. And I find that this stiffens them enough, but it's still really light. And this is just some cord again that I bought at Michael's. So I have, I have a few dozen Mill Hill ornaments on my tree that I have made. <clears throat> they don't take a really long time. Now, this, this is absolutely going to be quicker to stitch than any of the Mill Hill Santas or other ornaments. Um, but I will have to have them finished by someone else. And mom, you're not finishing these ones. Sorry. Because, because I want them finished like on this stiff board like this with the cord around it and a cord hanger. And I know some finishers who do that. So I'm going to reach out to some people um, next year after the holidays, after the holidays. In fact, uh, I bought this antique sampler. It was really small. I think I showed it on the previous video. And I would show it to you now, but it kind of fell behind some stuff in the closet here. And I'm not digging it out right now. <laughs> but um, I bought it because it was from the Netherlands and Ryan's grandmother is Dutch. <laughs> so I bought it because the, the young woman who stitched it had the same name as Ryan's grandmother. Um, and so I was telling her about it. I said, I've already charted it, you know, so I'm gonna re-stitch it myself and have my own little version. I'm gonna stitch it on 56 counts, it'll be tiny, it'll be like this big. Um, I said, but Virginia, you know, if you want it, I would be more than happy to have it framed up for you. The sad thing is, is that she's blind, so she'll never actually be able to see it. But I described it to her and she seems very happy to have it. But I told her, I was like, I'm not sending it to the framers anytime soon. I said, I'll send it in like February. <laughs> So, but, but, you know, speaking of heritage, I guess, um, I've had some interesting discoveries over the last couple weeks. So I think it was in my second video that I was talking about my Scottishness and it was like, you know, my maiden name is Spalding and my understanding is that my father's grandfather came over on a boat from Scotland and and married a woman who was 100% native. It's a pack of lies. <laughs> um, I did some searching on ancestry and I found, I found that great grandmother and she has, uh, it got really dark here. It's it looks like it's about to storm. I'm gonna turn this light on. It's slightly better or worse. I don't know. This is what we're dealing with. Anyway, I found that grandmother and she was like an eighth. And I think I did the math. What does that make me? Like 164th and my kids are 120, 1 128th. 
native. Anyway, <laughs> it's like, don't believe anything your parents tell you. Um, and then Frank Sr., you know, my great grandfather, he didn't come from Scotland. He was from Maine. And his father was from Maine, and his father was from Maine, and his father was from Maine. I was like, you guys have been in Maine or like, you know, on the East Coast since the 1600s. I finally found when they came over, and it was 15, 1600s or something. Um, but they were all from England. But then Ryan and I later did some more digging and found that, well, actually they were in Lincolnshire and that long ago, what were the borders? Anyway, but then we found way far back, we found some Dispaldings and then Ryan, the history nut that he is, he was like, well, you know, the Normans invaded the island, so they might be French and that's where the duh comes from. And I told him, I was looking at it, I was like, that duh didn't make any sense to me because that is absolutely a French thing. But then, uh, but then there was a Ralph back there as well and um, some other names. And Ryan was like, well, that sounds Norse. And I was like, okay, so we got the Vikings and we got the Normans and they're all intersecting. And then that created the people that then turned, it was very weird. Anyway, so do your own research <laughs> and don't just take what your parents tell you as gospel. And this is not a slight to my mother because this is crap that she was told by my father who was a piece of work. So, <laughs> so, but it was interesting. Like I feel, I felt like initially I was really bummed because I had so strongly held on to this Scottish identity that I thought I had. And then I kind of lost it. And then when Ryan and I were doing more research as well, it was like 11 o'clock at night one time. And uh, I was like, well, I kind of got it back because of where they were on the island and you know, borders are fluid and stuff at that time and whatever. But then ultimately you're French. I don't know. And then I was asking him, well, who, how do you identify as anything? Like, how do you decide what nationality or country to identify with? Because he, you know, he's entering all these notes about race car drivers and some of them are racing under three flags. And it's like, how are you doing that? You need to pick one, but then how do you pick one? I don't know. Because there are some people who are born to immigrant parents. So you, you really identify with where they came from, but now you're here in this new country and I don't know. This has absolutely nothing to do with stitching, except, uh, you know, I was so excited about starting a, a Scottish sampler <clears throat> along with Alba Stitcher <clears throat> on January 25th for Burnside. And I'm still gonna do that. Everybody can participate. You don't have to be Scottish. Just pick like a Scottish theme sampler uh, or not sampler, not even a sampler, just a Scottish themed chart, Scottish in some little way, and start on January 25th. And her hashtag that she has come up with is hashtag Mighty We Nation Sal. Uh, so I will be participating in that and I would encourage you to. Uh, but you know, it was exciting to think that maybe my, maybe I had had an ancestor in Scotland who was like roaming around, you know, and maybe knew the families of some of these girls who had stitched these Scottish samplers. Right, and wouldn't that be interesting? I don't know. All right, you wanna see some haul? <laughs> now that it's like really gloomy, it started raining. It started raining, got really dark. So at least for the first bit of this video, we had good light, right? Boy. Yeah, it is really dark. <laughs> well. Uh, this one I've shown before, but I'll show it again. So it's not a new purchase, but I was thinking um, for next year, I have been I have been watching So Me Sarah. She is in Ireland, and uh, I think she's in Northern Ireland, actually. And uh, she has been working on, there's one particular project. It's a modern folk embroidery, and she's been putting in one thread a day, with some exceptions. There are some days that she misses, and so she'll catch up by putting in a couple threads on another day. Uh, but for the most part, she puts in one thread per day. And I thought, you know, that's really interesting because it's amazing to think that just one thread a day and then maybe by the end of the year or after six months or however long, you have this finished, completed project. And uh, I thought, well, do I, I really like the idea of that. I would like to try it 
uh, but do I want to do it with a small sampler so I finish really quickly or do I want to do it with a larger sampler and I think I would like to do it with a larger sampler but I do feel that I should choose something monochromatic like she did because the trouble with picking something with multiple colors is well what if your one thread only gets you a few stitches on that day. I don't want to do that. So we're just going to do something monochromatic. So I was thinking a red sampler, of course. Now I have a limited number of red samplers left to me um, because I finished, you know, I finished one from the Words of Wisdom box <clears throat> and I have this one. I think this would be a good size. So I may, and I have the fabric already for this. Where did it go? This is cockle shell. You guys hear the rain? This is cockle shell. So I think this is a good option. But then also on Cyber Monday, Kitten Stitcher had an amazing sale. Now, if you go to her website and click what's on sale, she's still got a lot of stuff that's marked down an amazing amount. I was a little bummed because a couple of the things that I ordered turned out to then be out of stock. Ellen Barber is a, a is the home sweet home the small home sweet home very colorful hands across the sea that i ordered turns out it was out of stock so i didn't get that and she already refunded me so it's no big deal but i was like oh i really wanted that one and then ann webb with the goats i was like oh man that one with the goats <laughs> so i didn't get the one with the goats uh but they were screaming deals like half off but i did manage to get Mary Hellier. So this was another one I was thinking, this is a good monochromatic thread a day project. And then I also got Maria. This is a huge project though. I look at it and I think, oh, it's really not that big. It's just a strange orientation, but it is 589 stitches by 270 stitches. So big. So we might save her for later. Or she just wouldn't be a thread day project. It would take too long. <clears throat> Carmel is 311 stitches by 262 stitches. So that's not so bad. And Mary Hellier is 286 by 328. That's not bad either, but she's very dense. So I think maybe this would be a good balance for a thread of a thread a day project. It's sizable, but I I can see open space here. Whereas with Mary Hillier, I'm like, oh my god, it's so dense. So we'll see. But I have I have everything that I need for Carmel as well. So that that helps. <clears throat> I have fabric and floss. <coughs> so from Kitten Stitcher. I got some good deals. One of the things I got what, that I didn't need was this <coughs> Sampler Threads Collection by X2 Design. This is an exclusive pack of floss hand dyed by X2 Design, I think she's in Hungary, for Kitten Stitcher. And the idea is that it gives you a bunch of colors that you would need for the average sampler. So we've got reds, greens, browns, and like some creamy beiges and things. <coughs> and I wish that it hadn't started raining because I did have good light. <laughs> I did, and I could have shown you. So I'm gonna show you these, I think, again next time. But it's funny, I bought these. I was like, oh, that'd be perfect for, and then I forgot. <laughs> okay, because that's what I do. Okay, also from Kitten Stitcher, I got Sarah Barnes by The Scarlet House. This is a cute little thing, and it only calls for five colors. Three of the colors are Gloriana, it looks like. Unless you just wanted to use DMC. <clears throat> DMC, 898, 3721, 3012, A Crew, and 934. Easy peasy. <coughs> the next thing, Stacy Nash Primitives. What does this say? Lydia Corker Sampler Sewing Roll. I just thought this was cute. This is the antique. <clears throat> I'm not sure about the colors. What colors it, it takes. I'm not sure. It was cute. <laughs> it's got some birds and some flowers. This was $3. <laughs> $3. I was like, 
You can't leave it there for $3. Sarah's Christmas urn. Oh, and that was another thing I was going to say. Now, I got an awesome deal on this on Cyber Monday. It is no longer on sale. Some of these other things are still on sale. So if you go to kittenstitcher.com, look at the what's on sale, you'll find some of these things that I am showing. This is not still on sale, but it is still available. And the price isn't that bad. It was just that on Cyber Monday, it was so good. <coughs> Mary G. Ramage. I got this. I think this would look really cute next to Ellen Barber that I don't have. <laughs> It's no big deal. It's not like Ellen Barber's out of print or anything. I can get it anytime. <clears throat> this is Cathcart Colquan. I don't know how to pronounce that. But if you go onto the website again and just put in Cathcart. Now, what's interesting, I was, I was just reading a little bit, and this actually says C-A-R-H-C-A-R-T. So it's like car cart. And let's see. Sweetest little mistake was misspelling her own name. Cathcart has two syllables, Cath and Cart. And I think Cathcart started to stitch the second syllable of her name first, which is why that R is in there. Now, I thought this was really interesting because Ryan and I, as I say, we were listening to episodes of Lexicon Valley, and there was this whole episode on um, making mistakes within syllables whether you're carrying a sound from a syllable that you have already uttered or you are anticipating a sound in an upcoming syllable you know you're going to use and those are called anticipations and so it's interesting that you could not just speak an anticipation but stitch it but it's funny that she didn't rip it out like when I'm speaking and I make a mistake, obviously I can't go back in time and fix what I have said. <laughs> but when you're stitching your own name, and then I thought, well, how do you know that's not actually her name? Teresa, Teresa should know. She does her research, right? She doesn't just listen to her parents. <laughs> uh, a couple other things that I found were from Sheepish Antiques. I had never heard of these, but they were stupid cheap. <laughs> stupid cheap, like 250. <laughs> And so I thought, you know, even if the chart is horrible, I'm really not out that much, right? And I found 1989. I was one. I was one when this chart came out. So I don't know if these are reproductions. Sheepish Antiques makes me think that it is a reproduction, but there is no information provided about this. Uh, and it's funny, the chart is hand-drawn. When you guys had been talking about hand-drawn charts, I had no idea what you meant. That's, this is what you mean. I thought it was cute. I like this guy. Look at him. <laughs> He's funny. And then another one I found, again, stupid cheap from Sheepish Antiques on Kitten Stitcher's website. And this one is <clears throat> Selena Dunwoody, if you're interested. And this one was the EB sampler. This one I was really excited about. I can't even tell you why. Because it's weird. I don't know. Two Skinny Dogs, Martha Mulder, 1859. This is a Shakespeare's peddler. I really like this. But again, I can't even tell you why. Because it's weird. We're going to go with that. And this only calls for three, six, eight colors. That's it. Eight colors. I really like that. Stitch on 40 count dirty U E W E by Dames of the Needle. <clears throat> she says, or any coffee tea dyed fabrics. <clears throat> she says, antique ivory by Zweigart would also be a nice color. <clears throat> we have so many, so many awesome fabric options available to us these days. Oh, and this is one that I found on Etsy a while ago and I had sort of just put it in my favorites. But then, um, <clears throat> Kitten Stitcher had it, again, for a great deal. Jane Charlotte Wynn, 1835. And we actually have some Wins who are our friends, but it's W-I-N-N. -N. Uh, they're, the, they're the couple, one of the couples that I stitched a baby sampler for. 
Oh, and actually McKenna, she reached out to me and said that she, when she was growing up, she had a cross-stitched um, stocking that I think her grandmother made for her or something, and she would really like to have one for Everett, so would I do it? And at first I was like, oh my God, no. <laughs> Because I was thinking like the Dimensions kits, you know, those ones that are full coverage. And then I, and then I backed up and I was like, oh no, but then you've got Shepherd's Bush and you've got Bent Creek and you've got some other ones that are, you know, stitched on 28 count with very few stitches. And so I wrote back to her and I was, yes, I'm very excited. I would love to do this. I'm not doing full coverage, but we'll find some options and, and you can pick something out. So obviously not for this Christmas, that's not happening, but if, you know. If she can select a chart that she likes, then maybe I can get it done by next summer or so. But then I told her, I said, I don't sew, so I'm not gonna be able to finish this for you. I suppose we can ask my mom to do it. She's like, oh no, my husband, Jordan, our friend, uh, his mom sews and she would love to put the fit. I was like, yes, let's get her involved. She'll feel wonderful. <laughs> I'll stitch it and then she can sew it up and do it however she wants. Okay. Uh, and then this is also, this is another Shakespeare's Peddler. This is M. Setterthwaite, 1807. Even though I was, I had some frustrations with Spring Quaker by Lila's Studio or Leela's Studio. I have heard it both ways. I do not know which way to pronounce it. <clears throat> I do, I did really enjoy stitching the half medallions and the, and the medallions all the way around the, that that piece and so I thought I would like to do another Quaker and <clears throat> there's one by Scarlet Letter is it Gibson no I don't know what it now I can't remember you guys know what I'm talking about it's got some alphabets but then it's all black it has some alphabets kind of in the lower half um, but then it has a bunch of medallions and stuff around but then I saw this one and I thought I like that we've got an alphabet but it's not you know, I wouldn't have to spend so much time stitching so many alphabets and I just get to do the medallions. And this one's funny, it is all black except for that, that little bit of cream ivory right there on those flowers. Oh my God, I'm already almost an hour into this. I've been yammering on about. Okay, um, from Hillside Rookery on Etsy, she actually had some Black Friday deals. So these ones I got a little bit sooner. There's her card. Hillside Rookery, find her on Etsy. Uh, this one had been in my favorites for a while, and then when I saw that she was offering it for a really great price, I just jumped on it. This is Jane Cowie by The Scarlet House. Now the call for <coughs> is Needlepoint, Silks, or DMCs. I don't really wanna buy a bunch of silks you know, from a different company again, right? I'm already going down the Gloriana rabbit hole, which is gonna be a problem at 8.50 as game. Uh, so I don't really wanna buy the Needlepoint silks. So what I think I'm gonna do, and I already kind of started to do this, I just played around with it for just a few minutes the other day, is take a look at the DMCs, like this obviously would be noir, uh, but then we've got some others and I, and you know, a cream. Uh, so I just thought, well, I can make my own 103 conversion. <laughs> Let me go. I could do that. But I really love this one. I like these, the bugs here. I like the birds, the stripy birds. And these little tiny houses with their little tiny windows. That wouldn't take very long to stitch. <laughs> this is really pretty. And then I also got bum, 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 Charlotte Watkins, 1866. This is weird, but I liked it. And this one has 103 uh, and DMC. And I, looking at it, the 103s, <clears throat> I think I have at least half of them, you know. So I've got a lot of, I got a lot of samplers for next year. So plans would be to finish Harriet Hay before the end of the year, hopefully. Uh, finish the rose and the giant pear within the next couple weeks. <clears throat> and then just do as many of these as I feel like. I think if I can finish all 12 of them by next summer and then send them off to a finisher so that they'll grace our Christmas tree, 
next December. That would be nice. Um, but other than that, I'm not really going to try to push myself into finishing anything too quickly. And I'm going to allow myself, you know, a couple, a couple new starts, especially since in January, I'm going to the attic. I was thinking about this. I thought, Oh, well, there's still, you know, I got all these charts and there's still other things that I'd like to get. I thought I'm going to go to the attic and they're going to give us charts and I'm going to find more charts that I would like to buy because actually when I'm there, one of the things that I want to look for is a GGR. I would like, I think I'd like to get the betrothed. I know that they have a lot of models there. So that's the thing. I want to go around and look at the models and cause GGR on the charts, she puts a photo of the antique, which is cool, but it doesn't really show me what would be hanging on my wall if I were to stitch that chart. So, uh, so sometimes when I'm stitching a hands across the sea or something, I think, oh, I wish I could, oh, that's another thing. I wish I could see the antique, but I, but I do actually honestly like that we see the model. Okay. One thing I was going to say about this chart, she has a correction on the website. <clears throat> this tiny little blue bud thing next to this larger bud is not actually in this chart. So you have to go to the website and look at the corrections. But another thing that's not on the website under corrections and is not addressed in here, and it's not addressed on her videos because I went back and looked for it, to my knowledge anyway, the couple that I found when she's talking about the rose and the dry pear. In the chart, this line, this edge of the house right here, on the chart, it is the same gray as the roof. But here on the front, I think it looks like the same peach that's on this side and is on this side. So I started to stitch it in gray. I was like, well, I'm going to follow the chart. But then I, as I started to stitch it in gray, I was like, this looks so weird because this side is peach. So I'm going to do it in peach as it appears in the photo on the front. So when you get to that, if you're stitching this, just be aware of it. It's not really a big deal. But, you know, sometimes you have to make decisions like that. Like Harriet Hay. There are several inconsistencies between the chart and the model that is photographed um, and appears on her website. So as I'm stitching it, I think, well, I would really like it to be true to, you know, I would like it to be a true reproduction. That's what I'm trying to do. That's why I bought this. And that's why I actually stitched Harriet's name on it. But then I thought, there's no way for me to know what was actually intended by Harriet there. I, I don't see the antique. Um, so I'm looking at photos of the model online and I'm looking at the chart and ultimately you just have to make your own decision because nobody you can't call Michelle and say, what the hell is a stitch actually supposed to be? <laughs> uh, so it's not really a big deal, but you know, we all come across that stuff. And I just thought I would share <clears throat> with this because I know there are a lot of people who like this one or a lot of people that have already finished it. Uh, but if you haven't stitched it and you're going to stitch it, just be aware of that little bit there. And then this, the correction for this is on the Hands Across the Sea website. Yeah. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention is uh, back to Alba Stitcher, Amanda, who is in Scotland. She, this year, stitched the Monthly Quakers by From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. And she got all of them done. She did one a month for 12 months. And she should be really proud of herself. They they look very nice. But I thought about, I thought, well, that's, that's a cool thing to do. Like with Sarah's Thread a Day project. I really like that. I'm stealing that. And with Amanda's, I don't want to do those monthly Quakers. I like how they look. I'm glad that she did them. She really loves them. But that's not a project for me. However... I have had in my wish list on 123 Stitch a Reflet de Soie chart that has, um, has all the months on it in French and it has actually a little poem going throughout it and a bunch of vases of flowers. And I, I don't remember the name of the chart. I think it's Fleur toute l'année, something like that. Flowers all the year is what it means. Uh, and I thought, well, that would be really cool that could be my monthly thing. Like, and you know, you could do like a single vase with flower motif once a month. That wouldn't take that long. Anyway, so that's something I'm thinking about for next year. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger on that because we're already into a 
almost the middle of December. So if I want to have that available to me in early January, then I need to get that stuff. So that's why I was talking about going down the Gloriana rabbit hole because Reflet de Soi, that particular chart anyway, I called for Gloriana. So that's something I'm excited about. I'm excited to eventually get through some of these new charts that I have purchased. Um, do some Christmassy stuff, whatever. But uh, that's all I have for this time. Uh, I want to thank everybody for their kind comments and messages and everything. Again, it's really nice. It's 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 kind of like after I put out a video, like after a while, the comments and things stop coming. And I was like, oh, that's okay. But then as soon as I put out another video, it's like the world remembers that I exist again. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I get messages and things. It's nice. But thank you to... Thank you to everybody who, who watches even a little bit. Um, it's nice. I know there are a lot of floss tube. There's not just a lot of floss tube content creators out there, but there are so many videos because you figure so many people have been doing this for years. There's so much to watch. And I have gone back and watched like stuff from years ago because it's fun and it's, you know, I'm in a familiar voice in some ways to have on while you're stitching or doing whatever in the house. Like I, rem I was making chocolate chip cookies yesterday and I just had, I think I had so me Sarah on while I was making chocolate chip cookies. It was, it was nice. Uh, so you guys enjoy, enjoy floss tube. Um, enjoy time with your family. Hopefully, hopefully you're getting to take advantage of that these days. Um, I will be back. I plan to have another video in three weeks because I think that would be right at the end of the month, uh, 30th or something like that. But then I won't have anything until, after I come back from the attic in January. So I will have a lot to show you then. So I might not have a ton of content, a uh, ton of stuff to show you in three weeks, but in six weeks, I should have a crap ton. <laughs> so thank you again for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.